shit. Oh, oh god. Yep. That's Jaguar. Alright, so what makes this really interesting is that before this point in my life, I've actually only encountered an Atari Jaguar once before, and that was back in 1995. Where I grew up, there was a KB Toys in the mall, and on display that day, they had an Atari Jaguar, and so I went over and played it. And my memory of that moment isn't because of the Atari Jaguar itself, but it was because my shoes were actually stolen while playing it. So if you're wondering about that, um, essentially I bought new shoes, and I put them on my feet and put my old shoes in the box, and then while I was playing it, I set the box down in the center between my legs and started playing the Atari Jaguar. While playing Cybermorph, I was completely enthralled with the game because the, relatively for me, it was kind of new 3D graphics. I didn't really encounter much like that. But in that moment, I was distracted and someone jacked my shoes. So that was my experience with the Atari Jaguar and why it's forever ingrained in my mind. So the Atari Jaguar is a unique system in the sense that to understand it, you got to understand the time it came out. In the year 1993, we had the beginning of the fifth generation of gaming, but the main adversaries were still the Sega Genesis and the Super Nintendo, who dominated the North American video game market, and I would say were the main rivals for any new upcoming systems, and if they wanted to achieve any type of market share, they had to make a dent against these existing systems. But in 1993, we had the release of the 3DO in October, and that was followed by the Jaguar in November. The 3DO system marketed itself as a system that wasn't for kids, it wasn't a toy, unlike the Sega Genesis and the Nintendo. But the 3DO is another topic for later, but I think in some respects it started the trend we're going to see. Essentially, the marketing campaign being based primarily against the 16-bit generation of gaming. So the Atari Jaguar used this concept and put itself above the Sega and Nintendo by focusing mainly on the number of bits it had over the prior generation. The Atari Jaguar was actually almost the 32-bit Atari Panther. But due to the team working on the 64-bit Jaguar pulling ahead during development, and the idea of the extra bits basically leading to future-proofing of the system, Atari decided to put its cards in the Jaguar's deck. The Atari Jaguar was a system designed to challenge the existing systems of the day, and set its sights on challenging the Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo directly. And it thought to do this by basically stating it was a more powerful system, which in fact it was. On the surface, this isn't a bad approach to trying to make a market breakthrough. By showing your systems more powerful, it does make it somewhat more appealing. However, the Atari Jaguar achieved this by going with a multiprocessor architecture, which gives more power, but the drawback is that it's more difficult to develop for. Personally, I just blame lazy programmers. But I'm tired. You're back to work, Steve! I can hire a monkey to do your job! Hmm. Oh, sorry you folks had to see that, it's just really hard to find good help these days. When thinking about the Jaguar, not much can be said about it that hasn't already been said. So what I will talk about is the Jaguar's ad campaign, which at first started with the simple idea of do the math, playing off the system's greater number of bits, and then it shifted to after the Jaguar, other things just aren't as fun, with one commercial cutting to monkeys actually having sex. The 90s were a special time. I mean, th this was on television. Atari Jaguar. Suddenly, nothing else seems fun anymore. After the Jaguar failed, and it didn't gain any market saturation, and the release of the Saturn and PlayStation ultimately created an even greater dip in their sales, the Jaguar ad campaign resigned to long morning infomercials in a try to push what was left of the product. Also, Atari released the CD attachment in an attempt to kind of extend the life of the system even more. However, very few were produced, and if you have a working one, they become an increasing rarity and a treasure for some collectors, and their price in the last couple of years has skyrocketed. In the end, it wasn't enough, and the Atari Jaguar was a failure, and it was a valiant effort, and despite Atari's best efforts, its attempt to regain its past glory with the Atari Jaguar failed. And even with the innovative ideas behind the build of the Jaguar's multiprocessor design, the platform just proved too difficult for developers to program for. 
even though the game does have one of the best ports of Doom for that generation of consoles. But it was just too difficult a platform and didn't attract the game library required to make it a more popular system. Now the Atari Jaguar enjoys a really popular homebrew, almost cult following, where they release some really good, amazing titles. And I would say the, the game library of the Atari Jaguars is now starting to hit its stride as far as what the system's actual potential was. Well, thanks for watching. And what I will say about the Atari Jaguar is that, in some respects, it's kind of a gem, and that it didn't really reach its real stride until after its demise. So, for me, I'm gonna go out and say hi. What? Oh god, I was wrong! It's angry no one liked it when it came out! Oh, the bitch just reached it as more tea! Steve, get help! Oh, me? I can come back from working now? I thought a monkey could do my yeah. Oh, you bastard, Steve! If you like this content, I highly suggest you check out my website, historicnerd.com. I also highly suggest you check out theconsoleexplosion.com. It has a num number of other content providers there that generate quite a bit of good work that you might find enjoyable. If you want to say something to me directly, feel free to contact me at, uh, at historicalnerd on twitter.com. So, feel free. Alright, thank you very much for dropping by. Have a great night, evening, or day, whatever it is you're doing. Bye.